Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone, family and friends. If you're coming online now, today I want to greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you're watching later, welcome, welcome to Renew and Transform Ministries. Today it is indeed with a sad heart that um, we have learned that our brother Robin, he lost his father this morning and we want to lift him up in prayer and we also want to lift up Lenny who lost her mom too. So let us all go before the Lord in prayer as we bow our heads. Heavenly Father God, you, O oh God, are our comfort, O oh God. You are our comfort, Father God, in times of grief, O oh God. So Lord Father God, I want to lift up our brother Robin, who lost his father this morning, God. I want to lift up God, our sister Lenny, too, Lord, who lost her mom. Father God, I pray, Lord, even for all of those, God, for all of people all over, God, who are losing their relatives, Father God. I pray, God, for peace, God, that transcended all understanding, Father God, to cover them and to cover their relatives, Father God. Even as they go through, God, this morning period, Lord, give them strength, oh God, as they prepare for the burial, oh God. Give them the strength, God, oh Lord, to go through this, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Father. Hallelujah to your precious name. Lord, Father God, I pray, Lord, for those, God, who are suffering from anxiety, oh God, and depression, oh God, and grief, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you'll cover them, Lord, with the blood of Jesus, Father God, and be with them, God. I pray, Lord, for those, God, that are sick in their bodies and not feeling well. I pray for Sister Harriet, God, who is suffering, God, from the COVID-19 pneumonia, God. I just pray, Lord, that you'll cover her, Lord, with the blood of Jesus, God. We pray all for all of those, God, who are suffering even now from COVID-19 and their side effects, God. Cover them, Lord, with the blood of Jesus from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, Father God. Cover their lungs, God, with the blood of Jesus, Father God. We pray for healing for them, God. Hallelujah to your precious name. Lord Father God, you've said in your word, God, that healing, God, is the children's bread, and we are your children, oh God. So, Lord Father God, for those, God, who are sick in their bodies, God, whatever organs that they may be suffering, God, whether it be their heart, their lungs, their intestines, Father God, their brains, God, we pray, Lord, for healing, God. Even, God, as they are looking online, God, as they are agreeing with me, Lord. So, Father God, your word and your promises to us today, God. You said, oh God, in your word, wherever two or more come together in your name, God. That wherever we are, God, and you will be there. And you've also said, God, that whatever we ask in the name of Jesus, Lord. That, Lord, our wishes will be granted to glorify our Father in heaven, God. So, Lord, Father God, as we come together, God, from all over, God, wherever we are, in Florida, in New York, Father God, in England, all over the country, God, we come together in your name, God, and we pray for peace, God. We pray for healing, God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Lord, Father God, we pray, Lord, that even as the COVID-19, God, as the disease, God, is getting more rampant, Lord, as strains, God, are becoming even more resistant to the vaccine, God. Oh, Lord, you are God. You are God alone. You are Jehovah. You, oh Lord, are our refuge, oh God. So, Lord, Father God, I pray, God, for your people, oh God, that God, you'll give them knowledge and wisdom and understanding, Father God, in how to conduct themselves, God, how to wear their masks correctly, Father God. God, I just pray, Lord, that even if the vaccines are being made, God, that, Lord, the vaccines, God, will be made and they, you'll give God, the producer, God, the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding, God, in how to produce a vaccine to, to combat, God, the resistance strains of this virus, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. And, Lord, we repent, God, of our sins, Lord. We repent, God, for our sins, God, in the name of Jesus, Father. God, we give you, Lord, the honor, the praise, and the glory, Father. 
As we, Lord, as we now go into worship, we pray, God, that our worship, God, will be acceptable unto you. We pray for your word, God, that your word, God, will touch our hearts, touch our minds, God. Renew us, God, in our hearts and our minds, God. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, wherever you are, in your house, lift up your voice in joyful worship. Yes. You may not be with all people, but you are with your family. So come together and raise your voice in worship. Amen. Father, today in the name of our Lord Jesus, God, we thank you for the privilege just to be able to come into your presence. Father, to be able to cast all of our cares upon you, for we know that you care for us. In the name of Jesus, Father, today we want to lift up our sister Shafira's Auntie Leela before you. God, even as she's struggling for breath to, to hold on to life, God, we ask in the name of Jesus that even as she is there, Lord God, that you would stretch forth your hand. And God, that you would touch this woman wherever she is right now in Jesus' name. We pray, God, that if she does not know the Lord Jesus as her Savior, even as she is preparing to go into eternity, Lord God, this is the most frightening time for anyone if they don't know Jesus as Savior God. And so we pray, God, for her right now. And we ask, God, that you would send people right now to minister the love of Christ to her. God, that she would have an opportunity to invite Jesus into her life if she does not know him. Because that is the only way that she can be assured of spending eternity with you and so God even as all of us your children are calling upon you all around this country and in other countries around the world on behalf of this woman God our sister's auntie we ask in Jesus name for grace God we ask for compassion and God we pray that you will touch her in the name of Jesus touch our beloved sister Shafira God and comfort her Comfort her relatives, Lord God. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ that transcends all understanding be hers even now in the name of our Lord Jesus. And Father, we pray in Jesus' name that as we prepare to go into our study for today, God, we ask that your spirit would give us ears to hear that which you are saying to us. And God, not only would we hear, but that we would understand in Jesus' name what it is that we are required to do. And God, then we would give ourselves over with diligence to getting it done to your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name, would you help me say amen, please? Amen. Well, praise God. We want to greet you today in the precious name of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. And a, a personal word just from me to you, Shapira. I feel your pain and my heart bleeds for you. I know what it is to lose a close relatives. I think we all do. And so I want you to know that we, your church family, we are praying for you. We are praying for the salvation of your aunt. We are praying for your relatives. Be encouraged. And if there is anything that we can do to help, you know how to get on to me. We love you with the love of the Lord Jesus. So... Today, we are going to be wrapping up our study series on Fly Higher. And what we'll be doing next week, we'll begin a new series that we'll build on this one, but we're closing this one off today. Um, as we wrap it up, there were several terms that you have heard us speak about throughout the month of January. You heard us speak about purpose. Why is it that what did God have in mind when Christ came? And he gave his life in loving self-sacrifice for all of us. And then he took up his life. He ascended to the Father and he imparted his spirit to those of us who believe in him for salvation. What did God have in mind? What is our purpose? Well, I want to say to all of us that we all, all of us have a common purpose. Pastor Ian, what is our purpose? Very simply, our purpose is to glorify God in our spirits souls and bodies which are his can we get a good amen, amen. right there our amen. purpose the reason why god has placed us on the earth is to glorify him in all spheres of our lives so that's number one the next word that you've heard us speaking about very frequently is the word mission 
So what is our mission? Again, all of us share a common mission. Our purpose, our mission rather on the earth is the things that we are supposed to be doing. So every single day, what are the things we're supposed to be doing? And in doing it, how do we go about bringing glory to God? So one part of our mission is to worship God. Another part of our mission is to tell other people and introduce them to Christ who alone can transform their lives. So those are two aspects of our mission. Then the next word that we spoke about was the word vision. So purpose and mission are uniform. We all have the same purpose. We all have the same mission. But vision is personal. The reason being, how you go about fulfilling the mission and the purpose is personal. So for example, um, I go about it by way of investing in other people. Right? I go about it by the way I treat my wife, by the way I treat my children, by the way I manage my resources. In this ministry, that's part of the vision over my life. Bethuel goes about it by way of teaching people how to manage their finances effectively for the glory of God. Um, one goes about it by doing videography and helping people to accomplish other aspects of their lives. If you're in the medical field, part of your vision, how you go about glorifying God, is ministering Christ to the people even as you serve them. If you are in the food business, well, praise God. <laughs> we love you. We all need you because you're in the business of feeding people for the glory of God. If you're in the compassion ministry, you're helping to minister in different areas on behalf of Christ to these people. So, we spoke about purpose, we spoke about mission, we spoke about vision, and we said vision is individual. Then we also spoke about planning. How do we go about executing the vision? That too is personal, because you can't go about executing a plan to feed people the same way you'd go about executing a plan to provide care for people. So they are different, and so those things are unique. We all, however, have to resource it. So without further ado, I want to read the text and then we'll begin doing this work that we came here for today. I really pray all of us hear what God's Spirit is saying because if we grasp it, 2021 is going to be totally different, so much more fruitful, so much more productive for each and every one of us. Can you give the Lord a good amen right amen. there? So we're back in Genesis chapter 26 verse 1 and then We'll read two and a few other verses. Here's what it says. So, now there was a famine in the land besides the famine, sorry, the former famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Gerar and to Abimelech, the king of the Philistines. Verse 2, and the Lord appeared to him and said, do not go down to Egypt. Dwell in the land of which I shall tell you. Verse 12, and Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. Why? The Lord blessed him. 13, the man became rich. The man became, progression, became rich and gained more and more, gained progression, more and more progression until he became very wealthy. So he was building every time upon what he had accomplished. He had possessions of flocks and herds and many servants, so that the Philistines envied him. And my daughter asked me the other day as we were taking a walk, she said, Daddy, can you stand to be blessed? Now before you jump and say amen, say oh me. Because a lot of people don't know how to handle blessings and they lose themselves along the way. Right? But can you stand to be blessed? She was quoting Bishop Jakes. So, the call to fly higher is not jumping on an aircraft or putting on wings. It is learning to build your life step by step. So I want to share some statistics with you that I came across just yesterday. On January 29th, 2020, the statistics show that here in America, 
12 million Americans cannot pay their rent. 12 million. I don't even know what a million bucks look like. Much more. 12 million people can't pay their rent. Where do you think they're ending up? 30 million Americans are food deprived. What do they mean by food deprived? They are incapable of providing three square meals per day. They don't have sufficient food to eat. Many small businesses are closing their doors permanently because many of them will not be able to reopen. Um, <laughs> the number keeps increasing each day. Not only that, but even local and state governments are cutting back on services they, that they were providing to people who are in need. So all of these are pressures that are taking place. And it says to you and to me that we can no longer afford to live like we've been living in the past. We can no longer afford to be so heavenly minded that we are no earthly good. Nor can we be afford to be so earthly minded that we are not good for heaven. This is the time to find an equilibrium to hear from God so that we can provide for our families and for a future. In fact, I want to bring your minds again to that verse, Jeremiah 29, 11, which we all love to quote. I know the plans that I have for you, saith God. Plans to prosper you and to do you good. Not to do you harm, but to give you a future and a hope. Do you know what God tells them to do before that? Well, let me tell you. In verse 4, he tells them, build houses and live in them. You understand that? Make provision for your future. He said, plant gardens, not a garden, but gardens, multiple income streams. Plant gardens and eat the fruit thereof. Then he says, Marry and produce children and then find wives for yeah, I like that. Find wives and husbands for your kids. <laughs> Get them my soap. Now here's the reason why. So that you do not die out from the land. In other words, legacy. See, we're not just talking about now. We are talking about legacy. And if you're building and you're not thinking legacy you're already missing the mark. If I'm building and I'm not thinking legacy, that's why I have him sitting there. If I'm not thinking legacy, I am missing the mark. So then, during a famine, which we are all facing right now, we all need to hear from God so that we can change our lives and the destiny or the future of our families. Because if we die out now, then there is no family to continue into the next generation. See, my kids have an obligation to continue into another generation to perpetuate it because that's how we carry on the plan and the purpose and program of God for the Taylor clan. Legacy, destiny. I like that. Legacy, destiny. Say amen, Ben Judah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so here's what I wrote for you. Having a sense of purpose Mission and vision gives meaning to our daily activities, right? That we wake up in the morning, there's a spring in our step. We don't want to lad hay in bed. Now, those of us who are from Ghana understand that term. No, we don't want to be laying in bed. I don't feel like getting up today. No, you get up with a zing and a zest. Why? Because you have vision, you have purpose, you have destiny of calling you. But having plans is what gives focus to our investment of resources. See, you can get up every day and wear scatterbrain. Yes, I'm full, I'm zesty, I'm hyper. But if you don't have a plan, and if you don't have a vision, then what happens? All that thing goes to waste, and you waste your day running around, like we would say in Ghana, like a headless chicken. In America, you all would say spinning your wheels, not accomplishing anything. But every day we get up, we must be accomplishing something for the glory of God, and that's because we are living life on purpose. Can we get a good amen? amen? And so here's this beautiful verse again. I haven't taken it out. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Do you know what the next part of the verse says? Because you have rejected knowledge, God says, I have also rejected you, and your children shall not be priests unto me. Check it out. Very important. So... 
<laughs> Many people spend more time planning a single vacation than planning their lives. And, and I think it's a challenge that if you, you know that life is going to be this long thing. So it, it requires that we all have plans in place to achieve the various goals, the various visions that we have on our lives. And without, m more people are so distracted by trying to avoid the planning stage that they'd rather enjoy a moment than enjoy a life. So the plans of the diligence <laughs> lead surely to abundance, but everyone who is hasty comes onto poverty. And that's why we, we've been talking for the past month about the importance of planning and taking the time to map out the things that you want to accomplish and making sure that you have a clear vision and a clear purpose. Because once you have a plan, then you know that it's a step-by-step -step process instead of just rushing through things without any real purpose or real plan. And as it says there, that only leads in one place where none of us want to be. So. He says I said this, but I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, many people, this is going back to the other, I, I tailored it. <laughs> many people spend more, t more time planning a two-week vacation than they do planning their entire life. That's why most people look forward to vacations and not to a fruitful and abundant life. And I think that if you put the time and effort into planning and, and really designing your life, I think we're all, we're all called to have a purpose and called to have a mission and called to have a vision. And part of that is how you want to live your life. And I think that you shouldn't want to have to take a vacation from your life, it, it, from your own life. Uh, you should be looking forward to the very next day instead of the two weeks most of us get off in a year. And you can't even take them together. So, <laughs> so here, here is what I said. Failing to plan one's future is folly. I want to read that again. Or say it again because I wrote it. Failing to plan one's future is folly. I want to go further and say failing to plan a future for your kids is folly. If you're legacy minded, you would also plan a future for your kids. Now you don't impose. You have what you what you would think you would like them to accomplish in mind. But you, when you talk with them, you then come to an agreement. You negotiate because you need to meet them half in whatever they are doing. The question you should be asking is, well, how is this going to align with the purpose over the family? How is this going to align over the mission with the family? And so um, I, I remember with Beth Ewell, when he told me that he wanted to go into financial services, I said, well, I didn't come from a background that dealt much with money. We dealt with farms. That's us. We had farms and we had logs and timber and all that, cattle and sheep and chickens. That's what we grew up with. He was breaking the mold. So I wrestled with it for a while, but I cooperated with him and I encouraged him. And do you know that today, he's the one that manages the family's financial resources. And he has done an excellent job. Cha-ching, cha-ching. <laughs> <laughs> but the point I'm making is, that is not divorce. What he has tra is training in, what he's doing is not divorce from the family's legacy. So it, it is not stereotyped, it's not everyone, one shoe fits everyone. No, even in the family there is room for diversity, but they all taper into, they all head towards the ultimate goal for the family. Can we get a good amen? Amen. So failing to plan for one's future is folly. Planning without making provision for resources to accomplish the plan is insanity. And do you know that many of us are local, local? When we get together with the guys, we talk big. Um, I am going to do this and I'm going to do that. But you fall in the guys and you stick into the plan. Perhaps you don't even have a plan. See, that, that's how disastrous it is. And then you wake up, your hair is white or you have no hair like some of us. Your beard is gray or you don't have any teeth. And you're still, when I am... Um, when I accomplish my plan, madness, that, that's insanity. Time to wake up. We got to stop daydreaming. We got to stop pontificating and start being strategic and intentional. Come on, give the Lord a good amen, amen. right there. Hear me, people of God. Stop wasting your life. It is better to sit in a corner on your own and plan and strategize and work than to jump in the crowd and be 
Miss Prima Donna or Mr. Popular. And when you wake up, you have accomplished nothing. You did not glorify God with your life. Your life is wasted. My life is wasted. We don't have time for that anymore. The clock is ticking. It's time to wake up. It's time to get down to business. And do you know what is the good thing? Even if you're 70 years old, and there's hope for you. Why? Because Abraham started his journey when he was 75. That's how I um, encourage myself. Woohoo! Amen. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, as you all notice, I'm hyper, right? You just got to deal with me today. <laughs> Prepare your work outside. Get everything ready for yourself in the field, and after that, build your house. And again, that just goes back to the importance of preparation and the importance of, you know, if you if you want to build a house, obviously you need to have a floor plan and a plan to execute how you want that house to look like. And I, I think in this case, your house represents not just the physical house that we might all be living in, but the, the house represents the life that you are building. So you need to be planning for that. Therefore, you can live in the life that you are living. So, David is a role model that we can all look to when you talk about strategic and legacy planning. We can look to him also as a role model for resource gathering for his generation and the generation to follow. So, we'll just work with a few texts. I'm looking at the clock and, and trying to make sure we get it done. So, we'll just look at a few texts to help us to get ahead and understand how God desires that we go about this thing. So David gathered materials to fulfill the plans for his vision. He gathered. You know, when I hear the word gather, you know what comes to my mind? W-O-R-K. Work, baby, work. You got to work it, right? You can't only have a dream it could become the impossible dream. Like the American dream is the impossible dream for many people. They keep reaching for it, but can't touch it because they don't have a plan to accomplish it. Or they're following somebody who ain't going anywhere. And you know where you're going by the stuff that you're doing. Anyway, we'll get there soon enough. So first off, Sailor, 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 you got to feel the calm down. <laughs> first off, <laughs> um, we need to recognize that we are building for the glory of God. This is the most critical component because it brings a harness, it puts a harness on everything that we are trying to accomplish in life. It harnesses how we treat other people. It harnesses how we manage time. It harnesses how we manage relationships and all the other resources when we understand that we are not building for ourselves we are building to glorify God. So, and that's important. Give the Lord an amen there. So this, this guy, Paul Tripp, it's kind of long, but here's what he said. The doctrine of God's glory encompasses the greatness, beauty, and perfection of all that he is. In everything that he is and in everything that he does, God is greater than human description. Every attribute. An action of God is stunningly beautiful in every way. Each characteristic of God and every accomplishment of His hand is totally Amen. perfect. Amen. Do you know what this is telling me? When we are going to, because we are now conscious that everything that we are doing is for the glory of God, then when we are going to speak a word, when we are going to think a thought, when we are going to develop a plan, we all have this in mind that we have to give excellence to it. It's not last minute. Um, the Guyanese, we would say, you, 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 it's not casa casa. <laughs> it's not anyhow. It, it's not cavalier. It's not casual. You're giving excellence in everything that you do. Now, some of us are not accustomed to that. So what do you think we have to do? We got to be disciples. We got to connect ourselves with someone who is excellent in the area or we bring into our lives part of our resource gathering, we bring in people who are excellent in the areas where we are weak. And so we complement each other rather than compete with each other and destroy anything. Very true. And if you read the next verse. Um, Here? Yes. Sorry, progress. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of stuff for us to get to. Now David said, Solomon, my son, my son is young and inexperienced. 
and the house to be built for the Lord must be exceedingly magnificent. Famous and glorious throughout all countries, I will now make preparation for it. So David made abundant preparations before his death. And I think if you recognize the calling that we all have on our lives to, to live lives that glorify God, we, we're literally God's representatives on earth. So just like how if I'm in the marketplace, if I'm just out and about, I represent my father which is why I have the shirt on to some strangers. <laughs> so we are all God's children. So we're always in a place where we have to represent our Father on earth. So we have to make sure that, not we have to, we get to make sure that we're adequate representations of the glory of God. So <clears throat> David gathered materials for the next generation to fulfill their part of the mission and vision. Uh, th there's this beautiful quote by Bishop Jakes that I love. <laughs> and actually, it changed. It changed the way I have been approaching things, and I restructured my life accordingly. Because all the Guyanese, you type amen in the chat box when I say this, right? Here is how we were brought up. Mother God, Father God, every child, blessed is the child that has their own. So that, that's the guy he's saying, mother has, father has, blessed is the child that has their own. And basically what that is saying is that children need to be industrious and produce for themselves. And so what happened is that in every generation, we were all busy preparing things for ourselves. But here's what Bishop Jake said that I love, and that changed my whole perspective, and I changed a lot of things that I've been doing. He said... We have to do more than give our children wise the sayings. You ask my kids, they'll tell you they got a lot of wise sayings. Mm -hmm. Ask Sister Barbara's kids, they'll tell you they got a lot of wise sayings. I listen to Juan and Vanessa talking to Zoe, and I hear them passing on sayings to her. Right? So we, we are good at passing on the wise sayings. But look at what he says next. We must also give them some material inheritance on which to build generational wealth. Now, don't stone me, but I'm going to say something. In fact, I'll tell you two things now. You may not like our former president, President Trump, but you watch what, what that guy did. That man ensured all of his kids had a start in business. All of them, he gave them a start in business. He was thinking legacy. Now, it doesn't matter. For me, it is not how they handle it and all that. That's your political view. I'm not into the politics. I'm talking about the principle. He gave each and every one of them a launch into business. They are all partnering with him in his business. Now, you say what you want. Ivanka has done an excellent job in that she has a whole brand of business, clothing and handbags and whatever, out of China. And she has come into her own right. That there is legacy. You give them something to build on and then they maximize on it. So let's not talk about him. Let, how many of you have ever heard of um, Miles Monroe? You want to talk about Miles there? No, I think that Ma Miles Monroe, as a, as a teacher, he exemplifies one of the best books I ever read about him was The Spirit of Leadership. I encourage you to read it. Um, leaders are readers, and we're all leaders in our own spheres of influence. But it was interesting to see how, in spite of his uh, passing, whether you want to call it timely or untimely, because of the things that he did in setting up a legacy, setting up his future generations, the, the mission that he had to spread the word across the globe literally just continued through his children. His, I believe his son and daughter continued the ministry. So you, you look at something like that, and what, whether it's its ministry behind the pulpit or in front of it, uh, because I think we all have different spheres of influence and we're all called to perpetuate that, our, our own vision in our own way. It's important to be set up that way. And I think he's a, a perfect example of setting up your children in this example to continue that vision. Amen. So, Chronicles chapter 22, First Chronicles 22, um, Verse 3, here's what it says. And David prepared iron in abundance 
for the nails of the door of the gates and for the joints and the bronze in abundance beyond measure. Let me read the next um, two verses there. And cedar trees in abundance for the Sidonians and those from Tyre brought such cedar wood to him. So here is where I'm going with this. David began gathering resources in his generation because he had this amazing vision to build a temple for God. Do you know we all have been given that assignment to build a temple for God? What? Do you not know that you are the temple of the living God? If anyone defies the temple of God, him will God destroy so all of us, we are the temple of God. Our assignment is to build this amazing edifice, this amazing structure for the glory of God. What is this edifice? Our lives. See, we have to build it. And notice what David said. When you, when you see things like cedar and, and silver and, and bronze, think about components to build your life for the glory of God. David was busy gathering it. In his generation, he was gathering it and gathering enough to, for the next generation to use also. So here's what the Bible says. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children to the fourth generation. Now here I am <laughs> in my generation. I still gather it for me. What do I pass on to the kids? much more to the fourth generation. Do you understand what I'm saying? So this is the call that God has placed in our lives. So here's what I wrote for you. It is foolish for us to work hard and gather resources for the future, but fail to prepare those who are to inherit and use those resources to expand our legacy. This is the dilemma. Nobody is taking, well, the majority of parents don't take time to sit down with their children and begin nurturing them and saying, look, this is what our family is all about. This is the direction we are supposed to be going in. Now, like I said, we're not creating mini-me's. What we are doing is helping them to understand the purpose over the family, understand the mission over the family, give them an insight into the vision that is there for the family, and then they, in their respective spheres, they are going to execute it, and we provide the resources. So some of you are saying, Pastor, you're, you're talking all these lofty ideas, but I'm already 60 or 70, what do I do? Listen, you still breathing? If you're still doing that, you can start. When do you start? Today. That's the whole thing about God. He brings things to our attention, and once we recognize and we accept it, He gives us an opportunity. And do you know what would happen? If you begin to respond in obedience today, here's what the Bible says. God will give us an opportunity to redeem the times. You hear me? As long as you accept it and you repent, God, I've wasted so many years of my life, but now I'm committing the rest of my life to you, that I can go forward and I will build on this legacy so that I can accomplish and my family can accomplish and I'll invest, God is going to give you an opportunity to expand that vision by investing in your seed. So, gathering resources for the legacy. So watch this now. I think it's better if you deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> now David said, Solomon, my son, is young and inexperienced. And the house to be built for the Lord must be exceedingly magnificent, famous, and glorious throughout all countries. I will now make preparation for it. So David made abundant, abundant preparations before his death. And I think in where, where my father was talking about a few minutes ago, I, I think it's important to recognize that when it comes to a vision, the, the vision has to be, your vision will be big enough to where it encompasses all the people. In fact, if you look at a few verses prior, when David was not only counting and gathering resources, he didn't have everything he personally needed for the fulfillment of his resources, or for the fulfillment of his goals, I should say. He, he involved other people to perpetuate that vision, and he was laying the foundation for that vision to be continued long after he was gone. So when it comes to taking into account the resources that you will need to, to fulfill that purpose, you have some of the resources, 
and other people have the rest of your resources. Mm -hmm. So you need to make sure that you are connecting yourself, know what your vision, know what your purpose is, recognize that you have what you need, but other people also have what you need. So always make sure that no, no man is an island or a woman. So, yes. I remember our famous term, co-creating, co-creators. Those are the people we need. Now, one of the things we have to be careful with is not to see everybody as your enemy. Someone disagreeing with you, someone challenging your ideas does not mean they're your enemy. They are just bringing a different dimension. See, some of us, we just have, well, some people only got 1D vision. Some people got 2D vision, but what we need is a multidimensional vision. Because when everybody looking at it from different angles at their part, you have a better view, a better end product than if I only look at it with my two eyes. And this is a challenge for many parents. Well, why, why, why must I do that, Daddy? Well, because I said so. I brought you into this world, baby, and I can sure take you out. <laughs> we don't deal with that anymore. What we have to do is to recognize that people see things from different perspectives. That is why a husband is incomplete without a wife. And a wife is definitely incomplete without a husband. Why? Because it's the two of them working together that builds a better family. And if one is pulling in the opposite direction, they don't accomplish anything. In fact, they will tear everything apart. Um, how many of you remember the movie War of the Roses? If you have not seen it, trust me, you need to see it and you will understand why I'm talking about that now. Did you see that one? Yes, I believe that you did. <laughs> War of the Roses. They, they pulled in opposite direction. Nobody wanted to, to make a sacrifice or to compromise. And you know what? They ended up killing each other. Basically, that's what I'm They destroyed each other. Many families are destroying each other. Many parents are destroying their own legacy because they're not being wise in how they're dealing with their kids. So we need to learn from this. Now, very, very important in the remaining time that we have, we need to talk about the importance of communicating the vision. And before I go there, I, I want to say this to all of us. It is the parent's job, even if your relationship with your kids are strained, and this is life, you know, I'm not burying my head. All of us, we have strained relationship. But the parent is the one who should be willing to compromise. See, young people are arrogant. And in their arrogance, they are dumb and, well, I don't want to say the other words. But if you are wise as a parent, if you understand God's call on your life, I want you to hear my heart today, please. If you understand God's call on your heart, on over your life, over your family, that God has called us to this amazing divine destiny in his son, you can afford to swallow your pride because the destiny of your family, the purpose of your family is greater than your own pride. Well, I'm the parent and they need to come to me and if they never come, then you and your destiny dies. Your legacy dies and you have failed God and failed yourself and failed your children. No, it is better to swallow your pride, humble yourself, reach out to your kids, rebuild the relationship so that you can invest in them and fulfill the legacy over your family and over your life. Hear me. Pride goes before destruction, the Bible says, and a haughty spirit before a fall. And many people think it's just an individual, but that's your legacy. That's your seed, that's your family, that's your future for generations. So we cannot allow the devil to blind our eyes to these things. We need to begin to invest in our children, to build a relationship, respect their space. Definitely respect their space, respect their desires. But build a bridge with your kids so that you can help to point them into the future. Don't just leave them where they are. Point them into the future. All of us love to talk about Jesus left the 99 and he went after the one. Well, you go after the one. You're that good shepherd. Go after the one. 
Or if it is the one that is with you on the 99 gone astray, hold the one there, but go after the 99. You need, we need to bring our kids on board to fulfill the vision and the mission and the purpose that God has placed in our lives. Can we get a good amen? amen. So listen now. Then he called his son. I want to say kids. <laughs> right? Just to be safe. I saw my daughter give me that look. <laughs> <laughs> then he called his son Solomon and charged. Now notice what he did. He charged. That didn't mean he rushed up to him and got into his face. No. He gave him a commission. He gave him a mandate. Then he called for his son Solomon and charged him. Notice what? To build a house for the Lord God of Israel. Watch. And David said to Solomon, my son, notice intimacy, my son, as for me, it was in my heart, to, sorry, in my mind to build a house to the name of the Lord my God. So you see right away, he's saying, this is a family vision. It was mine. I wanted to do it. David could not simply because David, God told him, your hand had shed too much blood. So God didn't want David building it with his blood-stained hands. But God still wanted to fulfill that vision that David had. So in David's generation, he could not build a house, but David could do something else. He could give a mandate. He could give a commission. He could impart the vision, and that's what he did. And do you know why I am where I am today? I remember sitting by my, yes, I used to hold on to my mommy's cure tail. I was the mama's boy. I used to be with my mom, and I heard her saying repeatedly about our ancestors who went from England to Guyana as missionaries, and their mandate was to share the good news of Jesus, not only to the people of Guyana, to people all around the world. That thing was printed indelibly in my mind. Not only that, but she also told me how wise they were, that they acquired all this land in Ibini Barbis River, that each child, each offspring, everyone who carries the name Taylor is a descendant of the Taylors, they could have a piece of land on which to build their house. So do you know that I have my piece of land in Ibini? That when my navel string came off, my mom buried it and planted a coconut tree over it. I know exactly where my piece of land was. Now, funny enough, one of my cousins built on the land, but it doesn't matter. My kids asked me the other day, they said, um, Daddy, we are tailors, are we? And I said, of course, if you want to go build your house there, just go choose your spot. Don't take what anybody else is building on, but there's a spot there for you. Why? Because our ancestors, they had this foresight and they were building for a legacy. David called his son, and he was passing on legacy to him. So this is what God said in response to David. He shall build a house for my name, and he shall be my son, and I will be his father, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Now this is a dual thing. In one sense, he was talking about Solomon, but prophetically, he was also speaking about the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the ultimate son. There are some other things that we have to cover, and I'm thinking because it's so important, we'll just wrap that up on Wednesday night, and that way we'll close off this series because I want you to really get it. So Wednesday night, we will finish off this series here, and next Sunday, we will launch the new series. Would that be okay? Sure. Your final thoughts, Ben Judah? I think that, that again, when it comes to the whole process of carrying out your, your vision, there's a process that needs to go into that. And if you take the necessary steps like we've been laying out over the past few weeks, then you can have a fruitful and abundant life, which is what we're all called to do. Because again, we're, we're earthly representations of our Heavenly Father. So when we take, it, take into consideration the vision that we've all been given, uh, the plans that need to be put into place, and then taking into account the resources, you can then map out and then execute a productive life that you get to enjoy while at the same time fulfilling God's purpose. Amen. And so um, we want to thank you for joining us today. There is a lot more that we have to share. And so we're going to wrap it up on Wednesday.
that's going to be, I think, the third of, um, of February. Can you imagine one month is already passed? If you don't have your plans done for the year yet, you need to giddy up. <laughs> you need to get up. You need to get time, make time to sit down and write it out. Pray and say, Lord, what should I be working towards this year? And you write them down. No matter how crazy they are, write them down. That's what the Bible says. Write it down. Make it plain. So that those who read may run with it. Write it down for yourself and your family. We thank God that this is he's helping us to understand these things. Because it is with understanding that we can begin to make adjustments. You see? Remember what we said earlier. If you're not planning... For a future that is folly. But if you say you're planning and you're not providing resources, you're not gathering resources, that's insanity. Because you have to gather resources. So Wednesday night we'll talk about the rest of this legacy part here. And then we'll also talk about where do we get resources from. Because a lot of people say, buying got money, but you, got, you can't park your car in your garage. Your closet overflowing, you got 40 pairs of shoes and you broke? No, you ain't broke. You're just not seeing clearly. Sell some of the shoes. What? Yeah, I said it, baby. Sell some of them shoes. No, <laughs> I'll wrap up with this. There was this young man that I met some years ago. He was broke, busted, and disgusted. He really was. But the dude had 24 pairs of expensive Nikes. And he was telling me he was broke and he didn't know what to do. So I looked at him. I said, are you sure you want the answer? <laughs> he said, yes, tell me. I said, sell 23. He said, what? Sell 23 of what? I said, sell 23 of those pairs of shoes. I can't do that fast. And I said, then you're not broke. <laughs> <laughs> Many times we go asking God to give us things when we already have the resources in our hands. But we'll talk about that later. Now, on the 21st of February, at 2 p.m., I sent the um, thing out via email. That's for those of us who live in the area here. Sorry, the rest of you can't join us, but for those living in the area here, we are going to come together for a little time of fellowship. We'll go for a walk. We are praying that the weather is nice and cool. This is Florida. You can never tell. So, But we want to ask you to join us. I already sent you the link. Check in your text message last week Sunday I sent it out to you um, join us you can bring your picnic basket um, make sure you bring your mask bring sure you bring your hand sanitizers and everything we will high five from afar I think Mary calls it air high five so we'll do like Marilee air high five and we'll give air, hand, uh, air hugs too but we want to come together at that park from 2 p.m. we'll chat we'll pray together and then we'll go for a walk talk about life and catch up. I haven't seen some of you in person for many months. We want to reconnect a little and we'll try to do something together as a church family once every month. So February, mark your calendars please, February 22nd, 2 p.m. Now I must tell you per vehicle to enter into the um, park, it's two dollars only and they take cash. I don't know if they take credit cards, they take cash. Two bucks. So if you don't have that, just get eight quarters. Look in your car, look somewhere under your bed, you'll find a quarter. Just take them and put them in a tin cup or something. Woo. <laughs> we love you with the love of the Lord Jesus. Um, let's, let's pray, please. And we'll do the benediction at the same time, so stretch forth your hand. Please, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. Thank you, God, for all of these beautiful, wonderful, amazing people of God that you are allowing us the privilege of sharing the love and the good news of Jesus with. We pray, God, that you would minister to them, that you would open their eyes to see, and help us all, God, to be disciplined, and God, to begin to put into practice the things that you are teaching us. For it is now that we know these things, Jesus said, we'll only be happy, we'll be blessed if we do them. So, Lord, may you bless us and keep us. May you lift up your countenance upon us and watch over us, guide and direct us, Fill us with your peace and God give us the motivation and the mind to fulfill your purpose, the mission, the vision, and the plans that you've given to us by being resourceful in gathering resources to your honor and your glory. Bless Robin and his family and comfort them. God bless Lenny's family also, God, and comfort them. Be with Shafir and her family 
and all of the other saints. Thank you for healing Sister Harriet. We give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So on behalf of the entire team who are here, and to the rest of you, we love you with the love of the Lord Jesus. Be very fruitful and productive for the rest of today and this week. You'll see Wednesday, 7 p.m. when we wrap up. Fly higher resourcing. God bless. Love you all.